So I'm going to go with the route of uh, signing these prospects. And Waiver was someone we were looking at whether or not we'd be able to sign him. Well, let's get him in here. He is going to be a Providence staple. In terms of defensemen, we obviously have a lot of them in those 60 overall range. There's one in particular, and it's Hauf that I want to sign. The highest overall defenseman that we drafted, 21 years old. Let's see if we can get him in here. Jared Hauf and Weber have both accepted. Let's simulate up now to that free agency period. So guys, as you can see, Louis Erickson has stayed at a 79 overall. So I guess now we know. But let's quickly talk about who is in this free agent class. We will go to goalies. As you can see, Frederick Anderson, Antti Ranta, Anton Hadobin, Ramo, Enroth, Reimer. There are some decent backup options, and not all of these goalies are going to go. So if, again, McIntyre and Subban don't impress like they did in last season, we will have some decent backup options defense and honestly here's where we're probably going to spend some money jason demirs chris russell merrick sidlicky although sidlicky i'm not really looking at luke shen as well there are some pretty solid defensive options as well but you know what let's talk about the big guns here Sidney crosby is a free agent and my god am i so tempted I'm so tempted. We can afford him, too. We really could. He wouldn't fit in with the team at all. We have Bergeron. We have Krejci. But my God, am I tempted to sign Sidney Crosby or even to bring back Milan Lucic. One more thing to note, taking a look at our trade block. Brad Marchand and Matt Bolesky are on there. You can see how just, just how minute Matt Bolesky's trade value is. I doubt we're going to be able to move him but it's at least worth a shot. So here we go, the first move we are going to make, we are going to go after Lars Volden again. I think in real life he actually might still be Bruins property, but regardless, we're gonna get another goalie in the system. We're going after the big fish of a defenseman. We are going after Jason Demers. We're gonna give him what he wants. We are going after Chris Russell. As you can see, he is pretty coveted, but we are hopefully going to land the other big fish of a defenseman. Moving on to right wings. The first thing we're gonna do is offer Tyler Randall a contract. Um, unfortunately, we lost him last season. Simply, I think, it might have been a trade, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was the uh, assistant GM doing whatever the fuck he wanted. I'm gonna give him a one-year deal. He's probably gonna be on our fourth line. And after a little bit of thought, that's all we're gonna do. We are potentially passing up on some decent players, but right now we have Pasternak, who's fitting to be on the top line, Seth Griffith, we have Brett Connolly, potentially now Tyler Randall, and Brian Ferlin. If we acquire anyone else that pushes Randall out of the lineup, pushes Connolly down to a fourth line spot. So we're, we're gonna give the guys a chance that we already have. Certainly Stewart, Jones, Alex Semen could all potentially be good signings for us and Zach Cassian as well. I might change my mind on this. We'll see how that goes. But for now, we're gonna pass up on these right wings. Left wings, and this is where it gets interesting because essentially we only have Bodker and Anthony Kamara. I'm factoring this in as if Brad Marchand and Matt Bolesky are leaving. So really, we have a skill guy and we have a fourth line grinder. We need two players to fit in. First move with left wings, we are going to offer Jason Chimera a one-year deal. We do need some defense. We do need a decent penalty killer, and he can step in and potentially fill that role. Second up, it was between Nathan Gerby and Matt Calvert, but because Calvert still has one year left of growth, we're gonna risk it on him. We're gonna give him that two year deal that he wants. We'll see if he accepts that. And then I'm sure you guys know, I can't help myself. We're, we're going back into it. We are going to give Milan Lucic another big contract because God damn it, I'm a Bruins fan and I don't know any better and I love Lucic. I don't care what anybody says. Let's see if he accepts the deal or if he goes to Edmonton. And as far as centers go, guys, we don't need anybody. I would love to play this, you know, kind of unrealistically and give Sidney Crosby a fucking huge contract and really just change this up. And I mean, yeah, you might say, oh, it's unrealistic. Look, Cody Hodgson still has an elite tag because EA is terrible. And you are absolutely right. But for now, I'm trying to fill team needs. Let's sim a couple of days, see if we can get any more big fish, see if we can get a trade offer, and also keep an eye and see where Sidney Crosby goes. But let's advance a day, see what happens. We do have an offer for Brad Marchand from the Vancouver Canucks, which I'm sure Canucks fans absolutely love. Marchand still has decent amount of trade value. 
which makes me very nervous about trading him away, but as you can see, he's at a 78 overall. Again, he's really dropped off, which is surprising. I mean, he had a 41-point season for us, but it just must be me mismanaging the morale system, and I wanted him to be a part of the core, but now might be the time to cut bait, and if he turns it around, he will be an unrestricted free agent next year. Maybe we can pick him back up, but two third-round picks from the Vancouver Canucks, we're just going to take it. Brad Marchand is gone. Matt Bolesky, as if it wasn't even possible, gets even more pissed. That is going to affect some people, but Brad Marchand is now a Vancouver Canuck. We do get Tyler Randall back. He will be on the fourth line. Chris Russell has rejected our offer and has gone to Nashville as if they needed any more defense with Shea Weber and Roman Yossi there. So we don't get Chris Russell. We do get Matt Calvert. That's not too bad. We do get Jason Chimera as well. Lars Volden. That is it for now. Did Merrick Sidlicki goes to Washington and Chris Russell to Nashville. Those have been the only big signings. But you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Luke Shen. No other teams are interested at the moment. So I'm going to drop this down to 3-5. See if we can save a little bit of money, but give him the two-year term. Moving forward, let's see if we can get any other big fish. We do get Jason Demers. That is a huge signing. We get the top free agent. He apparently dropped an overall point, but whatever. We get Jason Demers. He and Tori Krug are going to anchor this defense, so that's huge. Hopefully Milan Lucic is behind this prompt. He is, and he went to Edmonton and rejoined with Peter Chiarelli, so Milan Lucic will not be back in the black and gold, and we are going to have to find a replacement, and huge, huge deals in the activity feed, and I know you've already seen it. Sidney Crosby is a New Jersey Devil that is absolutely ridiculous. Frederick Anderson to the Buffalo Sabres. Crosby's a Devil for six years. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, guys, we made an offer to Justin Abdelkader after losing out on Milan Lucic. He has also declined. He has signed with the Carolina Hurricanes. The good news is, however, we have acquired David Jones. He has signed with us, and we did send out some offers to some depth guys, including Brian Gibbons, Matt Limblad, Ben Hanowski. And there you have it, guys, our last signing attempt. Luke Shen is here to help, hopefully, strengthen our defense. I'm going to take a quick look and see if there's anyone else we can pick up. If not, let's see what this team will look like in the preseason. Now, before going to the preseason, we'll just take a look at a couple of the deals that have gone through. Zach Cassian is still with Montreal. He's resigned. Jarrett Stoll is off to Chicago. James Reimer off to Florida, so we won't have the option to pick him back up. Kari Ramo to the San Jose Sharks. I'm pretty sure there was one other big one in here. Anton Hadobin to Vancouver. Not exactly what I meant. Mike Santarelli, Jonas Enroth, Chris Stewart, Yuri Talusti. Vancouver making a lot of signings. They're going to have a very different team. Advil Cater to Carolina and Antti Ranta to Nashville. That is the one I was thinking of. Not the biggest move, but it was a move. Nonetheless, overall, the biggest moves probably Lucic to Edmonton and, of course, Sidney Crosby to New Jersey. But let's get into the preseason now, and I'll show you what this team's going to look like. All right, guys, so here we go. I'm going to wrap up this episode. The offseason stuff took a little bit longer than I expected to do. But then again, now I can also get your feedback. What moves did I make that I, you know, that were good moves? What moves did I make that I shouldn't have made? I want your feedback and input. What should we look to do? So, so far, here's what the team looks like, and you'll see the progression a lot of players made. As you can see, Malcolm Subban and Zane McIntyre have both eclipsed the 80 overall mark. Malcolm Subban, though, an 81. He is also designated as a backup, so I'm expecting him to win out here and earn that backup spot. Again, if neither of them do, we will sign a free agent goalie. I haven't taken a look yet, but damn it, one of those two really need to step up and get it done. Over here in the AHL, of course, Tuka Rask, our starter, 92 overall. Weber already up to a 76 and designated as a minor league starter. He was a steal in that fourth round. Our starting defense, and really this is just a straight up battle for who is going to make it. Morrow and Irwin, both 81 overall. Linus Arneson's come out of nowhere to eclipse Kevin, Colin Miller, and Zach Trotman, who are all at a 78. So that is going to be one hell of a battle. Luke Shannon at 83. Uh, of course, Jason Demers, Tori Krug up there, Tommy Cross at a 75, Wickstrand in there, Brennan Carlo, good potential guy. 
So really defensively, we're looking a hell of a lot stronger with the signings of Demirs and Luke Shen. Take a look at our right wing spots. And as you can see, really, this is just battling out for who's a depth guy. We have Randall Furlan, Ben Hanowski, and Brian Gibbons. And as you can see, really, in the AHL, we have our guys. Griffith, who has just come out of nowhere to eclipse Pasternak, is now an 83 overall. Pasta at an 82, Jones at an 81, and Brett Connolly shot back up to an 80 overall from a 78 at around the time of the draft and around the time we re-signed him to essentially secure his spot on this team. So again, it really does make me nervous about, say, Brad Marchand, who we traded away. Has he grown back again? Has Louis Erickson regained his form? And really, that's why, as you see, Matt Bolesky still on this team, number one, because it's been a bitch to try and trade him. But number two, we can use him to see just how quickly players can bounce back. Kamara, Bolesky, Anton Bleed, all battling it out for potentially a depth spot. We'll take a look at those in the system. There is one spot open. We have Bodker, Matt Calvert's already up a point, and Jason Chimera. So there is one left wing spot open. One of these players will win out. Hopefully it's Matt Bolesky. Hopefully he can get back on the right track no longer. Is he extremely pissed off? Just disappointed. And we'll take a look at the centers as well. The center job I thought was locked up. We'll take a look at those in the system first. Obviously we have Bergeron, we have Krejci, we have Kokolchev at an 81 and out, honestly we might have to get him into the lineup as you can see austin zarnik in 81 spooner now an 80 phillips a 78 asiari a 77 so there's a lot of competition for that center spot as well a lot of competition on these teams to begin with i'm not going to have the preseason go as slowly as it did in the first two episodes of the series i am just going to breeze through it and show you guys the results of who is going to make this team but i will do that at the start of the next episode again let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this episode in general the moves that were made how do you think this team is actually going to perform as always do all that funny youtube stuff leave a like if you've enjoyed subscribe if you really enjoyed it share with your friends if you've enjoyed help spread the word again my channel's starting to pick up just a tiny bit of momentum just like the smallest possible visual blip on the nhl radar for the YouTube scene. And I appreciate it very much. And if you've watched this entire thing, I especially thank you guys. I will catch you all next time.